Hello everyone and welcome to the Contingency Plan. Is it better to face a shit hits the fan situation as a family or as an individual? We will take a look at the pros and cons of each. Granted, if you already have a family, you're probably not going to have much choice in the matter. And if you're a single individual, you may be forced to go at it alone. Regardless, here is a breakdown for both cases. The pros for facing such a situation as a family. More people for everyday chores. There will be a lot of chores. From cutting firewood, to foraging for food and water, to maintenance and repair, to organizing and auditing supplies and equipment, to rationing your resources and keeping your location secure. More people for patrols or to stand watch. The more people you have, the longer the time between shifts for each individual. 24-7 patrols will wear people down, both physically and mentally. Having specialists for certain tasks. The more people you have, the better the odds you will have someone good at first aid and another person good at recognizing edible plants. This goes for virtually every aspect of survival. More people to carry supplies if you need to relocate. In my case, I currently have four bug out backpacks, one clothing duffel bag, a suitcase on wheels full of ammunition that weighs well over 100 pounds, multiple firearms, and gallons of water along with many other items. Without a vehicle, there is no way I can move this equipment from one location to another. Safety in numbers. Others may be less prone to approach or attack a group as opposed to a single individual. Moral support. There will be days where you just want to say fuck it, but with others depending on you, it will give you motivation and reason to keep going. The cons for facing such a situation as a family. More mouths to feed. At a certain point, finding food even for one person is going to become extremely difficult. If some of the people in your family are too young or too old to forage for food, then the burden falls on those who can. One wild boar, for example, could feed an individual for a week or more, but depending on the size of the family or group, it may only provide enough food for a day or two. More noise that could give away your location. It's just a fact that the more people you have, the more noise you make overall. This is not only important when a threat is detected, but also when a shit hits the fan scenario. Sound is going to carry further than it does today, because there will be less ambient noise in general. The sound of a couple of children playing will carry a very long way in such a situation. Old and young can be a burden. The younger members, especially infants, will require constant care, which takes whoever is providing that care out of the equation in regards to doing other chores such as gathering food. Infants can also be difficult to keep quiet when not giving away your location as a priority. Since infants are not toilet trained, some form of diapers are going to need to be either found or made, and possibly cleaned, causing sanitation issues. Older family members can also become a drain on resources, slow down progress when traveling, and be unable to pull their own weight. Both the very young and very old are also more susceptible to illness and injury. Older people are more likely to be on prescription medications, and what happens when those medications run out? Almost impossible to be the gray man in a large group. Blending in and not being noticed becomes much more difficult the more people there are. More chance of someone going off the reservation. When you increase the number of people, you also increase the odds of someone disagreeing or not going along with the general consensus of the group as a whole. Without everyone on the same page, you risk the odds of the entire unit breaking down. Seeing a family member or loved one killed or injured. How well would you handle seeing a family member killed or gravely injured? This could easily be a real morale breaker for someone. The pros for facing such a situation as an individual. Easier to be the gray man. Blending in and not standing out is much easier as a single individual. Less resources needed. This may be the biggest one. In regards to both supplies and food, you only need enough for one. If you go foraging, the minimum amount you will need to gather is one meal for one person as opposed to feeding an entire family. You will only require enough medical supplies for one person, enough water for one person, enough shelter and warmth for one person. This not only takes less time to do, allowing you to focus on other tasks, but also removes the pressures of providing for others. The ability to be quiet or hide. There will be instances where not giving away your position may save your life. Much easier to move. 
A single individual is much more mobile as long as he or she doesn't have a lot to carry. Traveling at night silently or in a canoe or on a bicycle or a vehicle is much easier if you are alone. A group along with their supplies may also require multiple vehicles. Now instead of finding a car to travel in, you will require multiple cars or an RV. Cons for an individual during shit hits the fan. Must be a jack of all trades. Without knowing a little about everything, chances of you surviving are slim. You will need to know first aid, how to identify edible plants, how to build shelters, track, hunt, repair items, and a hundred other skill sets. Nobody to help with chores. You will be required to do all physical tasks by yourself, including wood cutting and gathering, water gathering and purification, food gathering, shelter building, and everything else you can imagine. You alone are responsible for securing your location. Patrols won't be possible, which means by the time you realize there is someone there, they will basically be right on top of you. Lack of human interaction. This will be an issue for some, but not others. I myself do better with isolation, but some people require others to socialize with. As mentioned already, if you have a family, then you don't really have a choice in the matter. What I hope this video does, though, is get you thinking about the cons of surviving such a situation as a family, so that you can come up with possible ways to turn those cons into pros, or at least minimize their impact. Thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe to our Facebook group at the link below in the description. Peace.